So when I reviewed the Qacoustics 3010i bookshelf speakers, you guys asked me my thoughts on the 3020i, and I said, well, maybe one day I'll be able to review them. Well, that day has come. So here we go, the Home Theater Hobbies review of the Qacoustics 3020i bookshelf speakers. So let's get to it. The 3020i is a bookshelf speaker from Q Acoustics. It's a part of their 3000i lineup of speakers, which includes the 3050i floor standing speaker, the 3090i center channel, and the QB12 subwoofer. The 3020i has the same tech as the other speakers in the line, such as P2P internal bracing and low profile binding posts. It has a 0.9 inch tweeter and a 5 inch driver. The frequency response is 64 hertz to 30,000 hertz. It has a nominal impedance of six ohms and a sensitivity of 88 dB. It stands 10.9 inches tall, 6.7 inches wide, and 11.1 inches deep, and it weighs 10.6 pounds. The pair costs $315, and it has several finishes, including black, gray, English walnut, which is a brown, and white. So here they are, the 3020i's from Q Acoustics. As you can see here, they sent them to me in their white, known as Arctic White. And honestly, I love this color. About a year ago, I reviewed the 3010i's and I had those in English Walnut. And I really, really like the English Walnut. But when I pulled these out of the box and I saw this uh, basically white on white grill with the way they got this slightly really off white or gray, I just, I, I was like, man, these things look amazing. And I pulled them out and I set them next to my Concept 20s that I have here along with the 3010i's that I still have here because I own both of those pairs. And um, I was just kind of looking at them, trying to figure out what I liked about them. And I realized I just, I really like the way these grills look with this kind of white on white grill look. And the funny thing is I was thinking about getting the Q, or the 3010i's in white, but I decided to go with English Walnut. But honestly, this white is my new favorite color. I really like the way it looks. My wife came in the room when I had them all set up and asked her which pair she liked and I didn't tell her anything. And she looked at them and she said she liked these too. And I said, why? She said, well, I really like the way the grill looks on the front. And I was like, me too. I think they look better than even the Concept 20s that are gloss white with the black grill. I like the grill. Now, let's move on. This is a matte surface finish, as I said, so you don't have to worry about fingerprints as much as you would on a gloss surface. And here we've got the grill here, and just below that, you've got this Q Acoustics logo that is reflective, and I think it looks pretty cool. To pull the grill off, all you do is just pull it, and it comes off because it is attached via magnets. You've got a magnet here on each one of the corners, and of course, correspondingly on the face of the speaker. Down here at the bottom, you have this little tab that allows you to line the grill up with this little indention here at the bottom of the woofer so you get nice alignment, which is a cool design feature. Up top, you have that 0.9 inch tweeter and just below that you have the five inch woofer. And it's all surrounded by this plastic uh, reflective or mirrored surface finish. And up top, it says high frequency decoupled and Q acoustics. So you do have some labels there. Now for me personally, I'd probably, I'm going to leave the grills on these because I like the way they look with the grills on, but you can go grill on or grill off, it's your choice. Now let's move on to the rear and bottom of the 3020i's. As you can see, you have the same surface finish on the back and on the bottom as you do on the sides and the front. So you have a nice clean look. In the middle of the back, you have the port here. This is a bass port, so you get a little bit better bass sound and it allows the air to escape as the woofer is moving back and forth. Now. If your speaker is less than seven inches away from a wall, you want to put the foam plug in. This foam plug comes in the package and you just slide it in like that. It'll clean up the bass response and it'll make the bass sound just a little bit tighter, a little bit better if you are less than seven inches from the wall. Now, if you are greater than seven inches, I just pull it out and leave it out and you're fine. Now, as you can see around the bass port, you have the speaker name, you also have the power handling impedance, serial number, and all of that. It looks kind of cool. I like the way it's got that same sort of gray look as the grill has on the front, just like the color matching. Now at the bottom, you have the low profile binding post and you have your black and your red, so negative and positive. Now, although these are low profile, they do accept all major speaker connections, including bare speaker wire, banana plugs like this one, and also spade connections like this one. You just unscrew it, put this 
spade in, screw it back together. And don't forget, red with red, black with black. Now let's move on to the bottom of the speaker. And the first thing you'll notice is on each corner you have little rubber feet. Now these rubber feet protect the surface finish of the speaker and the table on which it sits. It also prevents it from sliding around or even having a lot of excessive vibration going through to the table. So they have a lot of benefits. But you also have these two little holes in the center of the speaker and these are screw holes and they are for the speaker stands that Q Acoustic sells so you can sit these on a speaker stand and bolt them to the stand so the speaker itself won't slide back and forth. Now we're going to move on and do a couple of audio samples so you can hear how these sound. Sorry I wasn't able to do any movie audio in those audio samples, but I chose not to because right now due to the coronavirus and uh, YouTube being a little bit less staffed, they're using more AI to review the videos and therefore there's more chance of me having a copyright claim slash strike. So I decided to go with just free YouTube music. But we're gonna move on and I'm going to rank these speakers in a few different categories from one to five. One being the absolute worst and five being the absolute best. Now the first category I'm gonna rank is design and I have to give these a five out of five. I really like the way these things look. I mean, I gave the 3010Is a five out of five because I like the English Walnut and honestly, I wish I could give these a six because I like them so much. I like the Arctic White, I like the matte surface finish and I like the white on white grill. I think it looks good. I also like the overall design language in that you've got these nice curved edges, you've got a nice front or excuse me, flat front face. And then on the back, you have these nice low profile binding posts. So everything just looks nice and sweet. And you also have the magnetic grills so they attach very easily. I just really like these. I like the way these things look. I can't uh, say it enough. So yeah, I give these a five out of five for design. Now let's talk sound quality. And I have to give these a four and a half out of five. The 3020Is have the same neutral sound characteristics that Q Acoustics is known for with just a little bit more body than let's say the 3010Is. And when watching movies, it has a nice stereo image. Vocals are nice and centered while you have a nice sound field around the vocals. So you have music and different birds and different like that in the sound field and you have nice depth of image as well. So these present a really, really nice two channel stereo image. Now in the bass department, it plays pretty well from let's say 40 hertz and up and it really starts to sing at 50 hertz. So it does pretty well, but honestly it lacks the presence that you'd get from a dedicated subwoofer. So I definitely suggest that you add a dedicated subwoofer. Now the good news is I still have the QB12 here, the review unit that I reviewed just a few weeks ago. So let's go ahead and let's play a sound sample so you can hear how these sound with and without the QB12. Hopefully you enjoyed that sound sample and could really tell that the QB12 adds a lot to this image. So I definitely recommend that you add in a subwoofer to this presentation. It does play bass, but a subwoofer definitely really, really brings out the bass in both movies and music. 
But overall, I have to give these a four and a half out of five because they sound really good, nice and neutral with a bit more body and a really nice two channel image. The final category I'm gonna rank is value and I have to give these a four out of five. Now at 315 a pair, this is a good deal, but they have a little brother known as the 3010i, which will give you pretty similar sound quality for a little bit less money. And so that's why I knocked these down just a little bit of half a point compared to the 3010i's for value because you could pick the 3010i's up and get the same design language, same colors, all of that in a little bit less expensive box. So overall, I recommend the 3020i's from Q Acoustics. They have the 3000i lineup of design in that you get these nice curved edges, a magnetic grill, feet on the bottom, low profile binding posts, basically everything you want out of a bookshelf speaker. But they also have this fantastic color called Arctic White. You could pick this up or you could pick that English Walnut up. Both of them are great colors, but I definitely pick up the white color. They're better. And if you like a nice neutral sound with body and good presentation, good stereo image, these are definitely a pair of speakers you should look at. If you want to purchase these or anything else from Q Acoustics, use those links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll talk to you next time.